Hey y'all, Achieve Dad here. This is my guide for Stardew Valley's local legend. Let's get it. In Stardew Valley, one of the main objectives is to uh, bring the community center back to its original working order. So just head into town from the 5th of spring onward uh, when it's not raining. I think past 9 a.m. and you'll get this cutscene with Mary Lois introducing you to the community center. After the community center cutscene, when you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning, you will get a letter from Rasmodius. He is found in the a uh, little forest area that is beneath the farm. When you go meet the wizard, he's going to have you drink this uh, potion and it's going to give you forest magic in quotations. And then next time you go to the community center, you can read the scrolls that are there on the ground. When you first visit the community center after getting forest magic, there's only one bundle book that you can access to and it is in the crafts room. This first book is all about foraging, so it's probably the easiest one. It just takes the longest amount of time. The Spring Foraging Bundle is everything that can be found in Spring that you can pick up off the ground. All four of these items are just found being picked up in the world, so I'm not really going to explain what's going on. I think you guys can figure it out. Um, all four, also, when you craft them together, make Spring Seeds, you get 30 of them when you complete the bundle. That's pretty much it. Summer Foraging is the same way as Spring, but there's only three to pick up this time. The only thing I gotta say here is that grapes can also be grown in the fall and they take 10 days to mature. That's all. Fall foraging, same as everything else, nothing exciting. The only thing here is that there are two ways to collect mushrooms. There's actually three, but one I won't talk about. You can, after you earn 25 grand, you will have Demetrius visit your farm. He will ask to set up the cave. It can be either mushrooms or fruit bats. If you choose mushrooms, you can pick up common mushrooms from that cave. Winter foraging, not much to say here. You can get winter roots by using your hoe on artifact spots in winter, or you can get it by killing slimes on the uh, ice floors of the mine. You can find crystal fruit just through regular winter foraging, pecking it off the ground, or you can kill dust sprites on the ice floors of caves to get it. You need to use your hoe on artifact spots in winter to get the snow yam. And the crocus is only found through regular winter foraging. The construction metal is pretty darn simple. Wood and stone are literally everywhere on your farm. You need 198 wood and 99 stone to complete this one. And you start with the tools, so no big deal. For hardwood, you are going to need to get the steel axe, which will cost you 5,000 gold. But with the steel axe, you can break these logs on your farm. And then you can go into the secret woods by breaking the big log here. And it'll get you hardwood. The exotic foraging bundle is a little bit more all over the place. For coconut and cactus fruit, you need to finish the vault in the community center, which is going to cost you 42,500 gold. But once you get there, there are normal forageables like anything else. Cave carrots are found on all levels of the mine, either break the boxes or till the soil. All three mushrooms, the red, purple mushroom, and the morel, can be found in the mushroom cave that we talked about earlier. And lastly, for the resins, or the syrups, we need to plant each tree. You need to place a tapper on each tree. And then the maple seed will produce maple syrup, acorn will produce oak resin, and the pine seed will produce pine tar. With the crafts room done, we're going to move on to the pantry. The pantry is all about farming and other things that you can do that give you farming experience, so let's get it. Parsnips cost 20 gold and they take 4 days to grow. Green beans cost 60 gold and they take 10 days to grow. Cauliflower cost 80 gold and they take 12 days to grow. Lastly, potatoes cost 50 gold and they take 6 days to grow. Summer crops, same dealio, except this one gets you a quality sprinkler. Tomatoes cost 50 gold and take 11 days to grow. Hot peppers cost 40 gold and take 5 days to grow. Blueberries cost 80 gold and take 13 days to grow. And melons cost 80 gold and take 12 days to grow. Fall crops, same as ever. Corn can be planted in the summer or the fall. It takes 150 gold and takes 14 days to grow. Eggplant costs 20 gold and only takes 5 days. Pumpkins cost 100 gold and they take 13 days to grow. 
and yams cost 60 gold and take 10 days to grow. The quality crops bundle is different, you just need 5 each of 3 of these crops. The goal of the quality crops bundle is to just plant as many crops as possible, just load your farm up with all of them. And as you can see here, it is possible to get 5 gold parsnips in spring of year 1. Literally just plant as many as you can get in there, as much as your money can buy. And in the few farming levels you will be able to get some gold parsnips. The animal bundle is all about animals and what they produce. There's a good bit I need to explain here. You're going to have to go ahead and buy at least the big barn and the deluxe coop, which is going to cost you 52,000 gold, 2,000 wood, and 800 stone. And then the animals won't produce the things that you need to turn in until they reach at least one heart level of friendship with you. So just keep those things in mind. For the large milk, you need to buy the barn, buy a cow, and you need to buy the milk pail, which is going to cost you a total of 8,500 gold. For both eggs, you need to buy the coop and at least two chickens, one white and one brown, so you need to spend a total of 8,600 gold. For the large goat milk, you need to buy the big barn and a goat, which is going to cost you 16 grand. For the duck egg, you need the big coop and a duck, which is going to cost you 11,200 gold, and he'll produce after five nights. For the wool, you can do either the deluxe coop or barn, you can do either the rabbit or the sheep. Doing the coop is going to cost you 28,000 gold, and the rabbit will produce after six days. Finally, the artisan bundle is things that you can make from what the animals produce, and then you can get fruits from fruit trees that you can buy from Pierre. For the truffle oil, you need to get the deluxe barn and a pig, which is going to cost you 41,000 gold. After 10 days, he'll make a truffle, which you can put into the oil maker, and it will eventually make the truffle oil. You put wool on a loom to produce cloth. Using a cheese press, you can turn milk into cheese and goat milk into goat cheese. Make a bee house, and in every season but winter, it'll produce honey every four days. Put any fruit into a preserves jar, and you will get jelly. For each of the fruit, you have to buy the sapling from Pierre's General Store, and in total, the saplings cost 25,400 gold if you want to buy all of them at once, you know, just one of each. If you went and did the first six items in this uh, bundle, you will get the greenhouse and you can plant each of these trees in the greenhouse. Otherwise, each tree produces their fruit only in a specific season and that season is labeled on the fruit's actual seed, like the description. Now we're gonna be handling the fishing bundles. First, we need to go to the beach in a day past the third of spring. You will meet Willie and he will give you your first fishing rod. All the fish in the river fish bundle are obviously caught in the river. You can catch the sunfish during the spring or the summer between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. in the river, and it can only be found during sunny weather. Catfish can be found from 6 a.m. to midnight, but it's got to be raining, and this is one of the hardest catches for beginner players. The shad can be caught between 9 a.m. and 2 a.m., which is pretty much all day, in the spring, summer, and the fall, but it's got to be raining. The tiger trout can be caught between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. in either the fall or the winter. All of these fish are caught up in the mountain lake next to the mines. The largemouth bass is caught between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. all year long, no restrictions. The carp is found all day long in all seasons but winter, and it's also found in the sewer all year long, no restrictions. The bullhead only appears in the mountain lake, but it appears all year long with no restrictions. The sturgeon is found between 6 a.m. and 7 p.m. in summer and winter, and this is another really difficult catch. These fish are only found in the ocean. The sardine is found from 6 a.m. to 7 p.m. in the spring, fall, and the winter.
The tuna is also 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., but this one is summer and winter only. And the red snapper is also 6 a.m. to 7 p.m., but it can only be caught in the summer and the fall, and it has to be raining. The tilapia is 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., and it's only in the summer and fall. These fish can only be caught after a certain time and only in certain environments. The walleye is found in the river, the lake, and the forest pond from 12 p.m. to 2 a.m., so a very small window, only in the fall and only when it's raining. Bream are found in the rivers from 6 p.m. to 2 a.m. in all seasons. The eel is found in the ocean from 4 p.m. to 2 a.m. during the spring or the fall, and it's got to be raining. These next ones are not fish per se, but they are caught using the crab pot. You can make the crab pot anywhere. You have to put bait into it, and then in fresh water and ocean water, you'll get different types of fish. I'll call them fish. With the crab pot in the beach, you can catch um, a lobster, a crab, a cockle, a mussel, a shrimp, an oyster, and a clam. With the crab pots in any body of fresh water, you can catch a crayfish, a snail, and a periwinkle. The rest of the fish are considered specialty fish and are caught with special conditions. The puffer fish is found in the ocean from 12 to 4, so it's only a 4 hour window in the summer during sunny weather exclusively, and it's a very difficult catch, so it's going to take some time. The ghost fish is caught on levels 20 and 60 of the mines anytime all seasons, and it may also be dropped by uh, the ghost enemies. The sandfish is only found in the desert, so you've got to finish the vault in the um, community center, and then you can catch it from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. in all seasons. Lastly, the wood skip is caught in the secret woods anytime, any season. You just need to unlock the secret woods with a silver axe to break down that log that can break down hardwood. Next, we're going to be dealing with the boiler room bundles, but to do those, we need access to the mines. So any day after the 5th of spring in year one, you can head to the north part of Mountain Lake. You will find that the bridge is now available and you can enter the mines. You'll get this cute little cutscene, and you'll get a sword and have access to the mines. For the blacksmith's bundle, you just need to turn all these ores into bars. They're done the same way, so just take five ore and one coal, place it in the furnace, and it will turn into that bar. Everything in the geologist bundle is forgeable from the mines. Quartz can be found on every single floor of the mines, not a big deal. Earth crystals are found on levels 1 through 39, so in the lower parts of the mines. Frozen tears are found on levels 40 to 79 of the mines. And Fire Quartz are found on levels 80 to 120, so the rest. The Adventurer's Bundle is all about killing enemies and getting what they drop. Slimes and Bats are both found on every single level of the mines, so it, both of those should be no big deal. Solar Essence can be dropped from level 51 onward by either the Ghost or the Squid Kid. Void Essence can be dropped by either the Shadow Brutes or the Shamans from level 81 onward. The vault is super easy, you just need to rack up 42,500 in expendable gold, and you'll get, amongst other things that are not as important, a crystallarium, and you will unlock the desert via the uh, bus next to your house. Lastly, we're going to move on to the bulletin board, and it is the most time consuming, and there are repeat things that we have talked about before, so I'm not going to go over those things, so like in this chef's bundle, I won't talk about the maple syrup or the truffle, but I'll tell you how to get everything else. Fiddlehead ferns are forged from the secret woods in the summer. Poppies are growing during the summer. They cost 100 gold and they take 7 days to grow. Maki roll is a cooked dish, so you have to have your house upgraded at least once. Then you have to have the recipe which you get from the Queen of Sauce TV show on the 21st of summer. And then you need any single fish, a seaweed, and one rice to make the dish. For the fried egg, you get the recipe as soon as you upgrade the house and it only takes one egg. For the dye bundle, I'm going to leave out the red mushroom and talk about everything else. For sea urchins, you need 300 wood to access the east portion of the beach, and then you can find them on the ground. Sunflowers are grown in the summer. They cost 200 gold and take 8 days to grow. 
Duck feathers are an everyday luck based drop from the ducks. Aquamarines are found in the mines by either mining an aquamarine node or a gem node. Red cabbages are only available in year 2, they cost 100 gold and take 9 days to grow. For the field research bundle I will skip the purple mushroom and the chub. Nautilus shells are foraged on the beach in the winter. And frozen geodes are found randomly by breaking rocks in the mines from levels 40 to 79. For the fodder bundle I will skip the apples because we've had them before. Wheat is bought during the summer, it only costs 10 gold and takes 4 days to grow, and it produces both wheat and hay, but you have to have the 10 of the same quality wheat to go into the community center, and the hay you can also buy from Marnie or get it from your silos if you have any. For the enchanters bundle I will skip the oak resin and the pomegranate. For wine if you put any fruit into a keg, in about 6.5 days it will produce wine. And lastly, the rabbit's foot is a luck based drop from the rabbits. It also has a less than 1% chance to drop from any serpent in the skull caverns, and you can find it in the traveling cart, which is actually where I found mine. Once you complete the last bundle, you will get a short little cutscene where the Junimo thank you for your service, and you'll also get the achievement. And the next day you come back to the community center, you will get the Stardew Hero Trophy from Mayor Lewis.